Statements made by United Traders, UT, or its members are opinions and not investment advice. UT is not responsible for any investment decisions made using the information provided. Improvements are not guaranteed. This material does not take into account your particular investment objectives, financial situations, or needs, and is not intended as recommendations appropriate for you. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned on UT. This is my settings. Um, I leave the ratios alone. Um, I would not mess with the ratios. Guys, if the Fibonacci doesn't work from what you're seeing on the chart, like there's no correlation to the actual chart, um, don't use it. it. It won't help you. I mean, if you have like a penny stock that's been, you know, trading at a, a cent for forever, there's nothing to chart. Um, so you have to use it where it makes sense to do it on something that literally look, you can look at this chart and kind of see that there's something going on here. Okay. Uh, when, when you guys become familiar with Fibonacci, I don't need to draw a fan to see the fan. Um, you could see the fan in your mind, just looking at it. It's going to be the same for any indicators that you'll ever use. Uh, you can see where the volume would be, right? Where support and resistance, simply by looking at candles. Um, I'm a volume trader. I don't use this particular default setup because it doesn't have the volume stuff on it that I look for. I use equal volume candles, by the way, if you were wondering, um, that's just what I prefer. Uh, and I draw support and resistance zones based on that. Fibonacci's are not support and resistance zones. Fibonacci's are just areas of interest, potential targets where it could go um, after it's already been somewhere else. If you do an IPO, I'm gonna caution you, don't throw Fibonacci's on it until you get a defined move. Don't try to pick the top and see what the retracement is until you know for absolute certain it's the top. How do you know? You'll know. It'll fall below wherever where it's ever been and it's not going back there. Okay, so you'll already have a defined top. Where can it go from there? Typically, again, we'll look at the 61.8. Um, there have been a, uh, a lot of IPOs or newer tickers or, or something like that where um, people keep getting squeezed out of positions. Um, where a Fibonacci could help you in those particular cases um, is after you have the initial move made uh, to determine where it could potentially go. Always assume a worst case scenario. Um, this is not uh, trading advice per se, but for me, when you get something that's overextended, typically the drop is so much harder um, than the move up. Uh, and it's, it's more rapid because we're there's a lot of panic involved in there and there's not necessarily a lot of support or buying interest because it's already gone as far beyond as it was ever intended to go. Um, so these are the default settings and you guys can add a curve. Okay. So if you want to add another line, I wouldn't because it doesn't make any sense in the fan. If a fan goes beyond the hundred line, it's done. The fan no longer exists. Don't bother adding additional Fibonacci ratios uh like 161.8 that's 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 crazy can you do it yeah you can do whatever you want it's your indicator um but all you're going to see is it a, a weird line that comes down here and again it just it, it i don't need it for this chart so i'm not going to bother making something that doesn't need to be um i do suggest you color code uh enhance or modify your indicator to your own comfort level and your own comfort zone. Um, I do make another suggestion when you are uh, doing any indicator. If you're using longer time frames, you try to differentiate that particular indicator. You can't set it as a default naturally because you're right back to square one. But you could go through all the interesting charts that you're looking for and leave a default and chart all the monthlies. Then go back to the same tickers so you don't have to mess with the defaults. Change the defaults and then do all the weeklies. Change the defaults, do all the dailies, so on and so forth, so that you're not constantly changing every single um, uh, uh, particular drawing on every single chart every single time. It, it could be rather tedious. So it's something that you could do and it's something that, that makes sense to me. Uh, but your key areas, I leave it the 5, the 61.8. I make them a little more bold. I make them a different color. 
This is my profit taking for me. That makes sense. Yellow is caution. That makes sense. If you want to set these as red, that makes sense too, maybe for you. I like purple because I already have a bunch of red stuff on the chart um, in the candles. Um, so it just helps me to kind of see um, the color coding and the defaults that you have for your uh, support zones that you would draw inside that Fibonacci. Make whatever color makes sense to you. I wouldn't make it green or red because you're kind of hiding or smothering out candles and lines. So just make it something that makes sense to you if you're going to draw zones at all on your chart. I recommend it. I think it makes sense. Um, they often come into play again in the future. Um, I think there was something else I wanted to say it was one more question. Go ahead. Any yeah. more questions that came in? There is some more questions for you. So. Oh, RSI. 10. Oh, yes, that one. Okay. Can you do Fibonacci's on RSI? 100% absolutely. Okay. Um, I want to do the weekly. All right. So you would do period low to period high. All right. Um, let's do same thing extension wise, guys. Um, if we're looking, this move was made. Okay. So we went from period low, a high to a low. And we know that this particular move right here was made. And we wouldn't know that until it failed. This part right here starts to fall down. This is ultimately where it could go, the 50. So what I would draw this a zone, yeah. Does this always mean it's going to go to 61.8? Absolutely not. Do something that's consistent with what the chart tells you. So if it looks like the 50 is an area of interest in this particular area, it would probably repeat the same type of behavior again in the future. It could. Um, my own personal default, uh, RSI, has the lines instead of 70 and 30 is 61.8 and 32. Well, I got 61. I think it's 62 and 32 because you have to make it a flat number. But I made Fibonacci lines inside of my RSI instead of 70 and 30. I hope that makes sense. Um, but let me remove that because then we had a period low to a high to now a new low. Does this matter? Does this tell me anything? So don't be afraid to, to utilize it for, you know, um, maybe taking profit on a move, but it has to fit in with your trading um, strategy because from here to here to here, once it blows through this level and it had, looked like it had absolutely no struggle doing so, the 100 lines where I'm going to be taking profit. And that's makes sense here. And they got a looks like would have been a pullback on the chart above. Um, not looking at the chart above, but I do use Fibonacci's also on the uh, the indicators that make sense to do so. Uh, relative strength is, is one of them uh, at the default settings that it's at. I prefer exponential over... Um, Wilders or anything else, but uh, you you got to use what what works for you. Um, you can't use what works for me because you don't think like I think. Um, so, if this makes sense to you, uh, and you see a repeating recurrence in a trend of where it tends to want to go, um, then maybe utilize it or consider it in your trading strategy. Okay, that's all on that. And John, uh, we have one more, uh, well, yeah. a few people asking the same question, which is, which time frames do you use the Fibonacci's and would it work on, let's say, a hourly time frame or a 15 minute time frame? Yeah, you can definitely use it on a, on a, on a smaller time frame. So we're still on AMD, okay? Uh, and look, here's the 161.8 from a whole other time frame that we've already charted. So while I'm on this, I can actually see two other um, uh, Fibonacci levels on this. So what all I'm going to do is the same type of thing. It doesn't matter how you do it. It's period low to period high to period low. Low to high. This is just a, a long period of consolidation right in here. We have, looks like we had another test down. So until I get this final test, well, let's go ahead and draw that. So we've had this move. So here we are on, what is this? The Friday. Friday afternoon, I get this deep wick candle here, and then we move up past it. Where would I want to take profit? Well, I'd want to take profit right in here, between the 15 and 61.8, 88 bucks. So I've gotten in around 87.06. I'm going to try to get a dollar a share out of it. 
But if it runs up beyond that, great. Okay, but then I'm going to start taking profit off the table here. Now, this is a little bit interesting because on this particular day, it literally just kept, it just ran. So up we go. And it ran up so fast and so hard that it merited a pullback. And sure did. Like it literally went up past the 100, was most likely taken short, taken profit, everything. And then when we had that move, we don't need this anymore. This is done. Okay. So we've already went period low to high to low. Now we have an intraday period right in here, this particular move there. So where could I go on that particular move? So we have a low to a high, and now I have the low, okay? So on the retracement from the low, we go right into the 50, 61.8. Would I be taking profit here? Yes, and that's exactly what happened, which is why the candle looks the way that it does. But the, the following candle, and if you're looking at literally five minutes, guys, this is just one seamless move. Below is right through the 61.8. Goes right through the 100, right past prior uh, resistance zone. And this is where I would be looking to take profit in here. Well, it goes right back to this 161.8 up here on the longer time frame. What does this tell me? It tells me that whoever is trading AMD is probably using a longer time frame as their primary time frame. They're not charting off 15 minutes. Their intentions with AMD are bigger than mine. My intention is to catch some money today and get out. The people who are controlling this have a different intention than I do. Because we go up in here and we follow this zone right in here. So the shorter time frames and the longer time frames agree between this area. So what does it do? It moves all up and down this area, okay? Until it eventually breaks out and above with, with, with some level of conviction, right? Because it literally just kind of gaps up into here and fills this area and up and off we go. But yes, to answer your question, you can absolutely use it in any time frame because guys, if an algorithm that has Fibonacci's programmed into it is trading a stock, it's an algorithm with Fibonacci's programmed into it trading a stock. That's simple. I don't care what time frame you're using, the programming that told it what to do, the period A, B, C, D, E, is there. The program is not gonna change. You understand that? I'm not going to go back and take the programming just on shorter time frames. And, oh, well, let's not use Fibonacci's now because we're on a shorter time frame. We're still using a longer time frame, Fibonacci's, from other uh, from programs because the guys who are using this are on longer time frames. They're not going to go in and change what they're doing. So that's why you're seeing recurring ratios that you'll see over and over and over again. And what I think, if you notice what we looked at earlier when we were looking at the monthly and the weekly, that AMD has a habit of breaking above the 100 by a hair, okay? Why? I don't know. It could be a lot of different things. It could be a potential squeeze. Like a lot of people would be figuring, I'm going to take it short at 89.52 because it's already rejected. And all of a sudden, these people are you know, having to cover and it catapults it into a whole nother uh, Fibonacci ratio. You know, there could be a lot of things going on there. I, I don't know. I don't trade AMD. Um, as far as what happens, I'm just saying when you chart it, you're only looking at areas of interest. Should you be in the trade at that time? It's your account. Okay. Um, once I've hit my targets, I'm done. I'm out. So I don't look at it again until it gets to another target. Um, and then I'll look at it again. So this would have been a target, 161.8. This would have been a target, 161.8. This would have been a target, 261.8. And all of a sudden, now it's just moved up and down here in this zone. And until it breaks out, I don't know what to do next. So your trades would have been above this 94.36. And it's clear, okay? On this particular candle at 15 minutes, it runs up here, comes back down and closes, okay? The next candle in 15 minutes has a little bit of a test. And as it runs up, this is where you're long. I'd be long right in here and let it run. To where? I don't know. <laughs> Till it feels like greed that I start selling. 
So let's chart that, okay? Very low to high to low. Let's put in, uh, where would I sell? Low to high to low, okay? In this zone, that's a beautiful move. That is huge. It blows right through. So here's your 61.8. That's why you see these candles again, profit taking. I can't blame you. That's what I'll be doing too. But it, when it covers, it completely blows through that. This is where I'll be also taking profit. Again, it runs right through that again. Do I anticipate catching the whole move all the way up here at the 161.8? Um, unless AMD is curing cancer and solving the problems of the world, probably not today. All right. Um, but again, you've got to trade your own strategy. But when it breaks back down below the 100 level and defines that this is the high, we can now draw the period high to the low and to the high. And then where do I take profit if I'm short? At this point, I'm out of the trade. Um, so let's get rid of this one. Now, where can we go to the downside if I'm short? All right. So we got right punch right through it. It spent no time deciding whether it was going to hold 61.8. It came back up and tested and rejected it. Is it going to hold 100? No. Are we sure? Yeah, we're sure. Okay. 161.8, there's my next level. Guess what? I have a recurring overlapping Fibonacci level that I need to pay attention to from another time frame. All right. As you guys see in the pattern here, right? Now, what was once support is now resistance. So I got overlapping fib fibs here, which was once support is now resistance, I would take a rectangle and draw it right in here at this 92.79 level. And until it breaks above that, I'm not in this trade. And as far as it wants to trade sideways or whatever it's doing right here, that's fine. I don't know if this is the low. So I am not going to put a Fibonacci high to low to high and put this as a low anticipating it can go north because I don't know if this is the period of low yet. Let it define itself, okay? One thing that I, I can't caution enough, do not try to get ahead of yourself and do not try to get ahead of the market. You, it's all speculation. And if you start marrying that precept of, oh, this is a period low to a high and this is going to be the low and we're going to go up here, you're doing it wrong. I'll tell you right now, you can get, you could lose a lot of money. Don't, please do not do that. Um, that's trading advice because it's not <laughs> telling you to take a position or not. Just let it play out. You're not going to determine which direction this thing is going to go. Just do what it tells you to do. Um, but I would estimate it's going to go above here, the 1979, and move up potentially to my next target. And I would do another extension to figure out where that's going to be. If this defines as it's low, you go ahead and do that. Okay, then you can go ahead and draw it here, here, and here. Then you could say, well, you know, John, how do I know? If this is the defined period low, uh, you'll know because it's going to break above the resistance zone, 9279, okay, which is also another Fibonacci level. So when it breaks above this, can I take it long from, say, 93 bucks to, you know, 93.30? Yeah. If it fails it, I'm going to stop out and I'll, and that's it. How much money did I lose? Probably not a lot, unless it's moving super, super fast, okay? It didn't work. But if it runs above this, and we've already seen several times, it likes to go above the 100. This would be my next target right here. 94.35. If I'm trying to milk this thing for everything it's got, that's probably going to end up being the top if, if this is the bottom. Based on what we've seen in the past only. But I wouldn't be in it beyond that, expecting to go here and here because I don't know. But I would be taking profit all along the way. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, and John, uh, we have another question. In regards of looking for confluence, can you use volume profile to correlate with FIBS as target? Yep, you should. Mm -hmm. You absolutely should be doing that. So I was saying earlier, I, I don't have the volume profile on here, um, but I'm going to see if I can bring it up without crashing my computer. Okay, hang on just a sec here. Let's go back to, let's go to the monthly. No, we'll go to we'll go to the weekly. I don't want to do too much because I don't want it to uh, to be really mad at me. It's funny though when you zoom out, guys. Uh, that little tiny move that we made looks so big. <laughs> it's not. All right, that's this. 
little tiny Fibonacci extension over here. Um, so I'm going to remove that out of there. The people who are trading it, again, if we're using this as the indicator where we can go for a long position, follow these guys, okay? Until you're in, until it proves otherwise. Now, if you want to take little scalps throughout the day, the Fibonacci's are great. Throw them in there. Get, you know, your 30 cents a, 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 a trade when it breaks for certain zones or whatever. If you can get a dollar move out of uh, out of it, that's awesome. You know, you're doing great. 